the latest episode of Jobless Reincarnation. A couple of months passed since the last episode and Rudy has really started to build a reputation for himself, but it's not a reputation that is universally loved. As someone calls him out on how he operates and it gets to him a little bit. So to begin, Rudy has been really focused on, I would say doing some course correction in his life. From what we saw in his past life when he was somewhere in his 30s, he was isolated, didn't work out, friends, community, all that were a foreign concept to him at this point. In his new life, it seems he really wants to do the complete opposite of what he did in his last one. We see him work out extensively to the point now he has abs and definition. He's part of the community and does odd jobs and really puts a, his, a name out there for himself. And you could say that he's really part of the community now. Now, granted, part of the reason he's doing all this is so that his name can be out there so maybe he can hear about Zenith, Zenith can hear about him, and just overall that there could be some type of direction given to him so that he knows where to be outside of in the Northlands area. And while all this is happening, that is him building his reputation, Sarah's taking notice. Does she now suddenly think he's just a great guy? <laughs> Absolutely not. But she's warming up to him. She sees what he's doing. So whenever Rudy joins Counter Arrow for any type of assignments, she's not as prickly as she used to be. In fact, you could even say that she's warming up to him enough that, like for example, when they go to the Galgo ruins, things could have took a turn to the point where Rudy could have been left behind, but when Rudy was trying to buy everyone else time to escape, Sarah was one of the first ones to kind of go back and make sure that he made it out too. But while everybody came back from Counter Arrow and helped him not get messed up or potentially killed, then Soul from Step Ladder came about and Soul is probably one of the top of interest in the area, even before Counter Ever came around. So, this newbie group coming in, him thinking they're trying to steal his job or whatever, this leads to an altercation. He punches Timothy, the co captain of Counter Arrow, dead in the face. <laughs> this could have started a fight, but conversations I had, and it's understood that the cave that Soul was in because of time and monsters moving about. It eventually led to the ruins that Counter Arrow was in, and that's why the two ended up on a collision course and their missions overlapping. So, with that in mind, there's a half ass apology given, mostly when Soul is drunk later on, but while he does apologize to Timothy for punching him in the face, while saying that he has a very punchable face, then his eyes go on to Rudy. Rudy to him, because Rudy in Soul's mind half asses this thing that he's condescending and acts like he's the only one with issues, Soul doesn't like him. Not enough to actually hit him, but he makes it very clear that he does not like him whatsoever. And all Rudy can do is just grin and when it really gets bad, he just tries to commit to the idea that I'm going to stay out your way. I know you don't like me. I don't think I can win you over, so I'm just going to stay out your way. And even just saying that, it makes Soul mad. And he makes it even clear when he's sober, I don't like your ass. And you can kind of get it because Rudy, in doing all these odd jobs to build up his reputation, he's also doing a lot of small jobs that for people who aren't as high ranked as Rudy in Counter Arrow, that's how they can make a living. Him melting snow with his powers is taking away a day's work or maybe even more from people. And that's an issue. But while Rudy knows why he's doing these things, there's always a difference between your intention and other people's perception, and when he hears Soul's perception, it gets him down a little bit. But what kind of snaps him out of that, to a point, is that the following day, Counter Arrow comes into the guild, there's a blizzard going off and outside, and two other members don't come back. Suzanne reveals that they got overwhelmed, 
and they left Sarah and Mamiya behind and they're pretty sure Mamiya died and Sarah they assume died soon after but they can't confirm that. Now, let it be clear. While Sarah has definitely warmed up to Rudy, they're not chummy. They're not friends. <laughs> she may remind him of Eris, but he hasn't like gotten googly-eyed or kind of fantasized about her or anything. Yet, maybe to redeem himself, maybe because he needed to go on a suicide mission or even prove so wrong and make it seem like something that he does is about intrinsic motivation and not just something selfish or whatever. He decides in the middle of a blizzard to go out into the tree of forest and take on what are snow buffaloes. And <laughs> let it be very clear, Rudy kind of proves Soul's point by easily taking out these buffaloes without much effort or really having to swing his staff around. And when it comes to Sarah, he finds her. She seems to be in a tree that kind of reminds me of the trees from the Wizard of Oz a little bit. Except that instead of just attacking with their branches, it seems like they're trying to like eat or swallow Sarah through their trunks. But thankfully for Sarah, Rudy's able to easily get her without even harming the tree. But in order to get away from them and their branches and all that whipping around, he jumps in the river and has them go down the river and eventually gets them to a cave. In that cave, because they're both wet, and because it's a blizzard, naturally, they're stripped down to the underwear. Now, you know Rudy, I know Rudy. <laughs> we also know that Rudy keeps Roxy's panties in an altar and basically uses them as a means to comfort himself. And I don't mean that as a euphemism. But even with that in mind, and how perverted we know Rudy is, he doesn't do anything. I mean, does he look <laughs> a little bit, but Sarah's still covered up and he's not like googly eyed. We don't see him drooling or anything like that, but he takes note, but he's more of a gentleman than perhaps we have ever seen, which really shows he is definitely maturing. All that aside, Sarah is very thankful for being saved and it seems this may have potentially triggered a crush it's not really clear yet, but when they're leaving the cave, fully clothed and everything, haven't done anything, she does reach out for him in a way that she doesn't grab him, and it seems like something definitely is clicked on her in her mind. And one way you can really say that's the truth is that when they get back, Suzanne's ready to just curse or really go at really for doing what essentially can be considered a suicide mission. Yet, despite Sarah's relationship with Suzanne, she defends Rudy to the utmost she can, and it leads to Suzanne backing down. And with her backing down, <laughs> Timothy, the emotional man he is, he just breaks down in tears and thanks Rudy so much for doing what, at the time, they either couldn't or, in my opinion, wouldn't. So, first highlight for us is just Sarah and Rudy's bond, and that's because, yes, I'll admit, there are a lot of details missing here. And I'm not going to say it's the details regarding how Rudy might have slowly but surely changed her opinion of him. More so, the details missing are about what Sarah hasn't told us about herself, whether it is, you know, taking note of Eris maybe somebody being missing in her life or not playing a role that they should have or maybe something in her life not being there it's hard to tell but similar to Eris you can see she attached herself to Suzanne who's this powerful woman who also has a sort of paternal feel to her and when it comes to Rudy there's always that question of as much as maybe Rudy saw Sarah to be kind of like Eris what Maybe it could be that, like him, she used to be part of a group. She even maybe fell in love with one of her group members, but then they broke her heart. Because one of the things that we have to take note of now is that Rudy's not a kid anymore. He's either a teenager or a young adult, so 
when it comes to him forming friendships, relationships, and stuff like that, now people have baggage. Now people have had relationships that were romantic, maybe even sexual, and as we've seen, he's matured a little bit. I'm not gonna say a whole lot. He still is carrying around panties like he does, but he's not the same Rudy who was messing around with someone who was essentially his cousin. Never mind is technically a 30 some year old man who was messing with a teenager. He is <laughs> someone who seems a bit beyond where we left him off last season and how he handles a relationship now compared to then is gonna be something interesting to see. Leading to the second highlight, which is the fact that Soul made it clear he doesn't like Rudy, but at the same time, Soul isn't built up to be like a villain for us, Rudy's arc or even a season. Soul is just somebody who doesn't like Rudy for reasons that are valid. Rudy taking small jobs from people where there probably aren't that many and we were already told the Northlands is a poor area. So somebody, so somebody who is an A-class adventurer with the type of powers that Rudy has, and yet he's using those powers instead of taking on monsters who can threaten the village or anything like that, and instead melting snow. I think calling him someone who half-asses is not that wrong of a thing to do. Never mind, you and I both know since we hear Rudy's inner thoughts that he can be a little condescending and he's definitely hiding what he says and what he really feels so with that in mind soul is not too far off he may not have like the perfect perception of Rudy. he doesn't read him for filth or anything like that but his reasoning for not liking Rudy is valid and i kind of appreciate that even though rudy's doing all this work there's still people that don't like him and they don't like him in a way that they just don't want to see him around or mess with him rather than it be a case of they're trying to sabotage his life or even get him killed which leads it on the fence topic which is that mamir's death honestly was so anticlimactic we i mean granted we just met the man so what real emotional impact was it supposed to be but between how Counter Arrow was just kind of nonchalant about it to just the fact that when it came when it comes to the men, I don't feel like Amir, Timothy, or Patrice what they weren't really built up in the last episode. Suzanne, we got a sense of who she is. Sarah, the same. The men, not really at all. I would even say Soul in his little bits and pieces in this episode got so much more than Mamir, Patrice, or Timothy. Overall, this episode, I truly feel was about helping us understand not everything is about killing off monsters and making money when it comes to the show. Never mind even about survival adventuring. Sometimes it's just about building relationships and making it clear that Rudy is trying to heal he's trying to heal mentally emotionally he's trying to do all the things he didn't do in his past life and some of this can't be rushed some of it's gonna require him to be in the same place for months having to slowly but surely build up relationships and you know really process his trauma he had a lonely life in his past one which had no friends no girlfriend significant whatever in in this life he did everything he should have done to be with someone like Eris. he was patient kind taught her things protected her she protected him they really bonded and yet she still left he did everything that you would assume is what is needed to secure a relationship and he still did not get to have this lifelong relationship with somebody and so he has to pick himself up and learn how to love trust and even be part of a group again and it's i won't say it's it's emotional in a way but not emotional where even with me being the crybaby that i am that i was crying up for it but it is a beautiful thing to see especially because Everybody, especially Rudy, is so well-rounded, and I could only hope that some more shows get inspired by the way this one operates so that this is not such an anomaly.